Hi, I'm Paul Erlinson, Director of Product Support for Link Studio Technology. Today we're going to take a look at the In Control software. This is the software control interface for the Aurora In Converter system. Um, it's very cool for a number of reasons. Uh, not only does it allow you to control the in hardware from the convenience of the computer with all that screen real estate, uh, but also there's some functionality it has that you can't do from the front panel of the in. For instance, per channel routing, there's some driver setup options, things of that sort. Um, it'll work with versions of the Aurora in that support USB, Dante or Thunderbolt. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with the Pro Tools HD version, but that's because we don't have access to data lines there. Um, as far as other aspects to compatibility, if your computer supports the driver for the Aurora N, most likely it's going to support the in-control software with the caveat that it needs to be 64-bit. This is a 64-bit application, so you need to have a 64-bit version of your operating system. Uh, Windows 7 and above, Mac OS 10.9 and above, any of those are fine. As far as the Aurora compatibility, you need to have firmware revision 1.18 or above for this to work. If you don't, it's easy to, to upgrade, just download the updater from our website. You can run it through your computer connection or from the micro SD card. One last thing, we're looking at version 0.9.8 of the in-control software today. Um, this is a moving target. We're adding features and changing things all the time, uh, as we tend to do. Um, so if the version you downloaded looks a little bit different, that's why. But hopefully the heart of what I'm going to get across is still applicable. And with that being said, let's jump in and take a look at in-control. Okay, so here we are taking a look at the in-control interface. Uh, as you can see on the left, we have a number of menu items and various controls. I'll get to that a little bit later. In the main body here, we have a number of panels. The one that's forward is the outputs, so that's representing all the outputs on your configuration. Uh, the unit I'm looking at today has eight lines, 16 AES, and four mic inputs. So if you have a different configuration, that's gonna look a little bit different for you. Um, the outputs are always available, uh, just like on the Lynx mixer, the in control is output driven. So outputs are a constant and routing is uh, a matter of assigning things to a selected output. Um, the other panels can be expanded just by clicking into them like so. Um, but for now, let's just take a look at the outputs and see what we've got here. So first off, of course, there's a uh, very nice meters with peak hold. Uh, there is a uh, clip indicator at the top. So if you're more than three samples um, over digital zero, then that's going to trip. That's a good uh, troubleshooting tool. Uh, you have faders that are very responsive and functional. It'll show at the top how much uh, attenuation you have in DB there. At the bottom you have dim controls. This will drop the output for that channel by 20 dB. Mute turns it off of course. Um, and then there's a link button. So by default the channels are linked in stereo pairs. We can make them mono pairs. So if you wanted to just mute the right channel not the left for instance you could do that with um, by merely unlinking them. One thing we added that a lot of people had asked for is the ability to name outputs. And so right underneath here we can type in a name for that. That's very handy for uh, studio management and organization. Um, so all of the outputs, the line, the AES, they all show up, they're all individually accessible, and at the far end we have the phones. So we can do our routing to the phones from here, which is handy. Um, there's an important thing to know about how this works as far as level management. So we can have these levels all the way up and still hear nothing if the knob on the front of the Aurora in for the phones that you're using are turned down. So these are digital domain volume controls on the Aurora in front panel is analog domain. Um, so just make sure you turn those up if you're not getting any signal. Um, it's handy to use them together uh, because if you're sending a lot of sources to the phones, uh, you can be clipping the, the DAC and this way you can attenuate before it hits the DAC and then adjust to the listening level you want from the, uh, the knob on the front there. So there's a couple things that wouldn't be entirely obvious that uh, help with navigating your way through here and, and using in control. So let's say you've had some attenuation, you want to get that channel back to digital zero, just double click and it goes back to zero, which is quite handy. Um, you can control all the channels of the in control by holding down the control key on the keyboard. And then when you attenuate, click drag, it does all of them. That also works for other controls. So dim and mute and even link, unlink, 
all of those respond to that hotkey control. Um, you can go between channels with the arrow key or the tab key, and then you can do adjustments of the level with the up and down arrow keys, and this will be in half dB increments, so you can get quite fine with your adjustments there. If you want to do larger steps, if you have a keyboard with page up and page down, um, that'll do 3 dB increments, so that's quite handy. Um, you can invoke the dims by hitting the D key on the keyboard and the mutes with the M key which is quite handy. Um, so the key to using this is selecting the output then choosing what goes to the output. That's the heart of routing and you just select the output there. So let's look at it a couple different ways you can use the routing here.